Okay, Dawn here. Well, it's time for early voting. And um, I'm going to vote if you're over 65 or if you have a illness and disability, then you can uh, early vote by mail. And that's what I'm going to do. I've done it before. And uh, it's better than, you know, thinking, oh, I'll make it, I'll make it, like I've done in the past, and then I'll feel well enough to go and not get to vote. So, um, happened to me the last time, actually the last time, last presidential election, and I've missed some of my state elections, too, because of that. And actually I found out, oh, I'm flipping for no reason. Actually I found out that, uh, I went blank because I did the wrong thing. Okay, well, I, have, I showed them my little video. I'm making a regular video. I don't know if I'll get to edit these or not, but I have my voter registration card, so if you have that, you know, it tells you right there uh, all the information you need to know. For instance, this page right here says, uh, it's a page that says, Am I registered? And um, you can go <coughs> click on this drop down list and you can select between uh, the different ways to look up to see if you're registered. And I and uh, so I found that number that uh, it's it's uh, on the left and second, third column down, depending on how you look at the columns. VUID, uh, Voter Unique Identifier, that's what it says on my card. So I put that number in there and my date of birth, and it pulled up my information, which was already new because it was the same as my... Um, as my voter registration card. But if you don't have that, you can check. Of course, if you need to register, then that's something else. You'll have to read through these pages and find uh, find out how to register. But uh, this one here, it's funny they have different addresses. This is in Texas, by the way. You know, your state would be different uh, if you're not in Texas. But each address, pay attention to the addresses up there because they're uh, all a little bit different. Of course, if you go to the main page, it'll send you to all these links. They're all... Uh, that's how I found them. I started out the first time I did it. I went back through my old bookmarks, and the first time I did it, I started by just doing a Google search, you know. And uh, so anyway, make sure you're re eligible and registered to vote first. I want to close these pages as I go so that I won't <coughs> have so many open on this machine. Um, now, I'm just going to show the... This is votetexas.gov. Um, and here's the quick, so there's a lot of information to go through, so that's why I'm kind of making this video. Last day to register to vote, Tuesday, October 11, 2016. Now, I don't know if it's different in other uh, uh, states or not. Uh, first day of early voting, Monday, October 24th, 2016. <coughs> that would be to go, I believe that's going to be to you know go in and early vote. You know, you can do that too here in Texas anyway. Uh, last day to apply for a ballot by mail received not postmarked by Friday October 28th it says new law 11th day before election day ABM and FPCA I don't know what neither one of those are last day of early voting Friday November 4th uh, last day to receive a ballot by mail Tuesday November 8th Election day at 7 p.m. unless overseas deadline applies. Okay, I'm on. Well, I'll just go back up to the top of this page so you can kind of see what page it is. This is uh, votetexas.gov, and uh, you know that's where how I got there. Important 2016 election dates. That's the page that I was on. So uh, I kind of found what I was interested in by searching in the page itself. This one's not super long, so. Uh, Okay, now this page, uh, many Texans vote early, vote early in person, generally voting in person begins the 17th day before the election day, and uh, exception, early voting for elections held in May, you may vote early by mail if you are away from the country on election day you're sick or disabled, 65 years of age or older, you are confined in jail but eligible to vote. You can get a formal application for a ballot by mail, uh, Secretary of State Office, 
early voting clerk, county clerk, anything, or you can download a PDF, is what, which is what I do, PDF file that you can print out, fill out, which I did. And uh, I'm going to try to fax in my, uh, not faxing, you can fax them if you're, if your uh, local office has the ability to receive faxes. You can even write your own application if you do it exactly like they tell you. I don't think I'd try that, I'd get it wrong. And uh, your ballot must be must be sent to the early voting clerk. And uh, let's see. And let's see if a vote mail must be submitted by mail, common contract carrier, or fax. Okay, so that's that. Oh, I accidentally made it go somewhere. So that's that uh, basic rundown on that page. And then, see, so yeah, by following links and everything, I got to each one of these pages. So here's application for ballot by mail. And that's another page. It's, it's a different, different web address. It takes a lot to find all the right stuff. You have to read and read and read. So application for ballot by mail. To be eligible by mail in Texas, you must be 65 or older, disabled, out of the country, in jail, but uh, but otherwise eligible. Yeah, if you commit, I don't know what all the details are, but I've always known since I was young, if you commit a certain felony, then you're not, you lose your voting rights. Certain types of felonies. Okay. And then instructions for submitting application for ballot by mail. Print the PDF. I did that already. And by the way, uh, I have an add-on on my Firefox web browser where I can right-click scan with virus total. And even on, you know, I don't care what kind of, as a matter of fact, a government site might be exactly where a hacker might want to plant a virus to try to infect everybody while they're trying to vote, you know. So uh, I scanned it and made sure it was clean before I downloaded it, and it was right now. But you should always check everything you download. But PDFs are really vulnerable for for uh, malware, uh, anything you download is anymore. I mean, websites, everything you view on the internet, you download. That's how you see it. But especially at files, separate files, you know, they they're real common to be affected. Print PDF and ABBM or submit. I don't know what ABBM. Oh, that's what they're calling the whole thing: the ballot by mail application, ballot by mail ABBM. Oh, okay or submit an order online. I saw that, I'll show that page in a minute. Uh, you can uh, fill out a form online and they'll mail you one. Which would be easy as long as you don't uh, forget to get it done. That's why I'm just trying to get it all done right now so that I don't end up uh, not getting it done. Complete sections one through eight, sign and date. If you're unable to sign the application, you can help get help. Tells you what to do, how to do it. Someone helped you do this and that. Let's see. Fixed postage. If you printed the application, you must place it in your own envelope. Oh, if you printed the application, you must place it in your own envelope and add postage. Oh, okay. So I'm going to try to e email uh, email mine as an attachment. But yeah, I was kind of thinking, well, maybe you just fold this, uh, the paper, I mean the application as you get it. I'll show you what it looks like. I have it uh, downloaded and opened up in... I opened it up in a regular PDF viewer because it was too tiny to read on the website. I'll show you that in a minute. But uh, this way it's big enough to read, and there's the application not filled out. And it looks just like the one they would send you, but of course it, prints, it, it printed out in two pages. And I thought, well, you know, you could. This has the two early voting clerk on here already, and all that, and from, and then of course the instructions, which are too tiny to read. And I didn't. Uh, there was enough instructions on the website I didn't try to read. I, I, I can't read any of this myself. I, ha I don't have wear prescription glasses, but I have to wear, you know, what they call reading glasses, magnifying glasses. But I couldn't read any of the text, but I saw I read it on my computer and then counted the blanks down. I mean, I can get my magnifying glass and make sure I'm in the right blank. But, it, you know, it kills you to, it gives you an eye strain and a headache to try to read this tiny stuff, so... I was able to fill mine out between looking at it on the computer and uh, and uh, then looking down at the paper, you know, and doing it. And so anyway, I was thinking, well, I could just put this on the outside and fold it up and 
fold it in half and mail it in. And it would probably work, but then if the post office didn't like that, they might not send it. So I guess if they tell you to put it in an envelope, I'd put it in an envelope. Then if you're going to mail it. And someone helped you. Fixed postage. Oh yeah, I'm going backwards. If you ordered the application online, it was mailed to you. Fold the application in half, moisten in the lab, and seal in postage. We'll see. That's the only thing that you don't have here with this is the uh, stick them on the, the thing they mailed you, you know. So I bet it would work. I've done something like that in years past, but I wouldn't. I don't know. I was thinking I'd be more likely to make a mistake in getting the address just right than, uh, than I'd be worried about folding that thing and putting a stamp on it. Let's see. Um, address and mail. It's completed to the clerk in your county. We also uh, fax the application if the fax machine is available in the early clerk's office. You also have the option of submitting a scanned copy of the complete and signed application to early voting clerk via email. That's what I'm going to do as long as everything works out. I haven't scanned it yet. <coughs> um, but it shouldn't be a problem. You, I do that sort of stuff all the time. That's what I'm... <laughs> I'm better at computer stuff than I am at, uh, I can't see things right to do paperwork very well. The early voting clerk is the county clerk, elections administrator, or of your county, <laughs> for your county. <coughs> I'm not, I can't read out loud very well either, so you'll have to read this stuff for yourself if you want to do it. Let me get a drink. <coughs> Actually doing pretty well today. I've been so much allergies and coughing so much. Every time I make a video, I cough like a madman. Okay, contact information including fax numbers, if available, and email addresses for early voting clerks are available on this website. And there's the link. Usually they put those links like at the end, but they put it at the first. But so I figured that out. Notice: Do not mail, fax, or email. Complete applications for ballot by mail to the Secretary of State's office. All applications received by this office will be rejected. Okay, so I guess people have been doing that. Military and overseas voters are welcome to use a regular registration and early voting by mail process available to all voters from their home county on election day. However, there is are also special provisions for military and overseas voters. For more information, please read Early voting, Texas pamphlet. Note, free software such as Adobe. Oh, yeah, uh, you need Adobe Reader or a, another, like I didn't use Adobe Reader. I'm a, I use Linux on even run Windows. And there is a version of Adobe Reader for Linux, but I don't even know if I have it installed. Anyway, you need a PDF reader. Now, a lot of forms, that reminds me, a lot of forms are fill out forms, but this one wasn't, Well, but I just now remembered I didn't try to open it in Adobe. So if it wasn't Adobe, Usually, if it's a fill out that you can fill out on your computer, all except for signing it, you know, uh, <coughs> I like to do that. It's much neater. Uh, you can type it in, you know. Um, you do need Adobe Reader for Windows or Linux or Mac or whatever. I guess there's one for Mac um, to do the filling form most of the time. If it was made by the real, regular, real, the uh, Adobe brand software. Okay, so. Uh, I won't go off and see if I have Adobe right now. I keep want, I started wanting to do that, but it doesn't really matter. <coughs> I've already filled mine out. Okay, so here is that request an application for ballot by mail page that I was talked about earlier. Somewhere up in there, there's a link for that. Yeah, order online. That would be this right here. And I didn't do that because I didn't want to wait on that and then get that and then have to make sure I do that and mail it back in and all that stuff. So, since they uh, give you a PDF you can download, I just went ahead and did that. Close that. Okay, now here's some of the some of the page. You're down toward lower in the page, but these are how they do the addresses to where you send it to. And if you click on that link, it opens up email where to vote. So, um That'll be the last thing I'll do is email mine in. I'll make sure it says the right thing. I guess I could close that page. I left it open to make sure I didn't lose it, but anyway, it, it, it depends on how your system's set up, but mine will do that. You can click on the link and uh, 
it'll just open up an email for me and I can just fill it in, attach the file, and uh, I'm good. <coughs> so um, if you have uh, you know, some sort of software, uh, maybe some kind of security software or something that won't allow you to do that, then you can probably see that if you ho hover over it down at the bottom left, you can see mail to voter by so and so tarotcounty.com. Now you can uh, copy email address, right click, copy email address, and that should work in Windows too. Can't right click in Mac, so you're, you'll have to figure that out for yourself. If you're, <coughs> if you're running Mac and you want to do that, But Linux and Windows will do that. And this is Fedora Linux, and I'm sure it would work in Bane or Ubuntu or whatever you had there. If you probably if you're running Linux, you already know uh, how to do all this stuff anyway, because you knew enough to install that system. So, what's the last one? This is where I was talking about. This is what you get if you open up that link to the uh, PDF form. It'll open up in your browser most of the time. If you don't, if you have trouble getting it to do that, like with ad blockers and malware blockers and stuff then uh, pop-up blockers then uh, <coughs> you know it might not open up so you'd have to you could again you could right click on the link and do a save as or whatever but it's too tiny for me to read and you can't uh, oh you can make it bigger just hit uh, control plus on your keyboard you can make it big enough to read some of them will do that and some of them won't but on the web they're not fill-in forms you can click around in there and it won't won't let you get a cursor to work on it. So anyway, I'm just that's my habit. I download them. I right I uh oh I didn't show that. Up in that window history recently closed tabs. Firefox, uh, that's how you would do that. Uh right up in here there's these you can make it to you can print it, presentation mode. That looks like it's just full screen. That right there, download that little arrow going down. Uh, currently view, current view, copy or open in a new window. Okay, so uh, I opened it in a new tab, so I don't really need to do that. So, <coughs> anyway, this particular program works fine. There's quite a few to choose from. This is O'Caller. It works pretty well, and uh, I just like the ones that I can make it big enough to to see and uh, and that work well you know they don't have any errors all this extra stuff on the left is can be helpful but I'd like to, there's a way to make that go away I like you know to make it sometimes they're really wide wider than a, this is 23 or 24 inch monitor and sometimes they still won't fit in there if I make it big enough to read so I, there's a way to close that but I always forget but anyway uh, that's getting it um, getting it downloaded that's what all that just to get it downloaded to where you can fill it out and uh, that's the quick quick basic version of it I mean I'd done it before so I had a little could remember somewhat you know pretty well how to do it but you know they change things from year to year too so um, if you don't like computers and, and you don't you know, or you, if you just don't know a whole lot about how to do all this stuff, then probably you might, you know, it might be easier for you to uh, just have them. You, you probably could do that order online. You know, click on that link and uh, and fill that in and then submit it. Actually, I think that's all you do. I don't. It doesn't look like there's going to be a next page, and they'll mail it to you. Or you can. Uh, that's probably easier. Some people don't even. Uh, don't even get that well you know but anyway like there is a way to <laughs> you can even follow the instructions and hand wrap you know when it request uh, like if you can't print don't have a printer or whatever that'd be a good way to go um, <coughs> or if you don't have a printer or you don't have a printers broke fact or you don't have a, a scanner scanners broke <coughs> I'm gonna scan it and I'm gonna email it and uh, since I'm early enough, this is September 12th, if I had any trouble, I did put my, on the form itself, didn't really go through the form, and I'm not going to try to, because I just probably make mistakes, but, you know, basic form, name, address, you need to follow, kind of follow the instructions, I mean, it's kind of self-explanatory, but if you kind of, if you hadn't read through the instructions, then 
you might not know what it means on here you know some of the things and you might fill in the wrong blank or something of course that'll throw you way off anyway uh, right in there contact information optional uh, it said you could put uh, please list phone number and or email address so I didn't want the phone number because I didn't want to end up getting a bunch of spam campaign calls I already get some of those anyway so I uh, gave an email address you know you can just delete the spam in there if you get that and maybe they don't do that but uh, I filled out some other things to do with politics in the past uh, and I s and I ended up with a bunch of spam uh, actually both email and phone calls so because uh, what happens is people even maybe the government office doesn't do that but people uh, look up public information and they'll get your number that way you know anything a lot of government information is public information that people can look up they'll look up uh, databases of public information and if you've given your phone number especially I would never put a mobile number in there you end up charging you money you know but uh, just to receive that spam depending on your phone plan but anyway um, that's what I think about all that so uh, <coughs> this page is the probably if you wanted to try to do it off of one page and you live in Texas then sos.state.texas.us elections voter uh oh I can't read that R E Q A B B M yeah you'll just have to go uh you you know if you, if you're not in Texas or you don't want to uh, go through the email the um try to see all these addresses see that's votetexas.gov if you don't want to do that in this video then you'll just have to google it votetexas.gov but they're all links I followed from each page and I couldn't go back and tell you the exact progression of how I got to where I got I just saved each tab open and then went back and made my video so uh, and if I made any mistakes and sorry I was doing my best here okay um what else the last thing will be I've got my little page open I haven't like I said I haven't scanned my uh, my application yet but I'll scan it and I think I'll stop this video and I think I will just for the heck of it make a video of scanning it but I want to close off some of these extra applications because this computer can't handle doing all that at once but uh, scanning uses quite a bit of resources and then I'll you know put in a subject put in I don't think it told you any particular thing you had to put in there I might put to my address that I'm going to I think I'll do that and um, let's see email looking for the word email I think I just skipped it. Okay. Yeah, you you also have the option to of submitting a scanned copy of the complete and signed application to Erd Willing Clerk via email. So it doesn't. I didn't see anywhere <coughs> that it said you got to put particular things in the body of the email or some outfits are like that, not just government, you know. But. Uh, so yeah, oh and I don't even remember where that was. I'll try to where was that? I just remembered something. Yeah, this page here about voting early in person. I think I forgot to mention something that I saw. And what it was saying uh is I can't now I don't think I can find it. It was saying that <coughs> Um, if you are okay, annual application. This is on the application. Um, see if I can copy that. I search for it. Copy to clipboard. Now, oh, hit the wrong thing. Hit the wrong keys. Okay, I'll just use my mouse and get there. There we go. 
If you are voting early, voting early because of an app expected absence, you may apply in person or ballot by mail or before early voting in person period begins, usually the seventh day day before. If you are voting by mail because you are disabled or 65 years of age or older, you may use a single application to request ballots by mail for all country elections in the calendar year, county elections. To do so, simply mark annual application on your app on your application for a ballot by mail when selecting election for which you are applying. You can write your own application for ballot by mail as long as it contains and so and so and so and so. So uh, somewhere else in there about annual application, uh, I mean about the dates, I don't think I can find it, but it said uh, and double check everything I say because I could always make mistakes. Let me see. Okay, I'm not going to reread that out loud. My my out loud reader's getting tired. Um, anywhere, in, if you if you sent one of these uh, annual applications, check it on your early voting thing. You could send it in any time, it not just between the voting in, you know times and. Uh, the, the dates and all that. Like these dates, <clears throat> I don't, I'm not seeing anything about annual application, but these dates, first ones I started showing, um, a lot of that's when, when you go in person to early vote. But anyway, that's why I say it's, it gets complicated. But uh, what I finally found out, and I wish I could see that, find that again. Um, Anytime during the calendar year, you could send in one of these applications uh, if you're doing an annual application for everything that year. You didn't have to do it within a certain time frame, so that makes that helps if you you know that's sim that makes things simpler. And you'll keep getting what I gather. You'll keep getting uh, voting. You know, you're, you're not voting now. You're you're just applying to vote by mail. So they're going to send you the vote ballot, and you're going to have to fill that out and send it back in. <coughs> I don't know if you can email <coughs> email that or not. Pro probably not. Probably have to mail it to a certain place. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> certain place. So, but if I just I finally realized it, I don't know if it's always been that way. Let me get a drink. Or started this year, or what, or last year. <coughs> but uh, if you filled one of these out early in the year, like in January, then all the elections of that year would come to you. Especially like a year like this, an election year. Now, I'm not 100% sure. I had originally thought that was do state and uh, national elections, but this may still only be. Uh, it could end up being that that only this what I'm talking about uh, getting all, all the ballots may only pertain to national elections so yeah so if that's if you got any more questions don't ask me because I don't know go back and read all this stuff uh, <coughs> so this done and I'm signing out for now and I'm going to scan my application and I'm going to email it in alright bye bye